A quick note before the video from our partners over at the Sojourn Audio Drama, because I think you will enjoy the exceptionally detailed set of cross sections of the Guinevere, the hero ship of the series, over on the Sojourn's Patreon at Wanderer here. These amazing pieces of art were created by Jean-Luc Sabaurin, and you can get access to the entire audio drama, as well as other bonus content like the visual dictionary and anthology shorts. Check them out in the links in the description and pinned comment below. Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Dog. I'm Hujiwana and today we are looking at my top 10 FTL systems, which we're going to get right into with the black hole drive from Event Horizon. It's here not because of how it actually functions or anything, but mostly because of the completely ridiculous appearance of the drive and the room it resides in. It's just so messed up, and yes, the entire style of the ship is a bit old and weird as I talked about in the Halloween special last year, but the drive core room really amps things up to a crazy degree. It's a horrible dungeon built around around this ritual item designed to tear space-time apart in order to send the ship long distances without going the long way around. From an in-universe perspective, did it really need to go so hard on the spikes? Or the ominous lighting? Yes, real-world high-energy experiments in highly complex fields of physics can create some otherworldly looking machines like the Wendelstein 7X, but those don't look like demons have a hand in their designs. Mostly. In ninth place is Interstellar because it's a rare example of an accurate depiction of a wormhole. They are fourth dimensional holes connecting two points in three dimensional space, with the entrances being spheres. A lot of work was put into getting the wormhole looking authentic by the film's science director Kip Thorne and the VFX studio Double Negative. Thorne informed Christopher Nolan of the variables that a wormhole shape can have, its length and radius, as these have dramatic effects on the visuals. The lensing effect on the hole and its rim, and the distorted, potentially duplicated images of whatever is on the other side. The interior was a bit more fanciful, but still awe-inspiring and very beautiful, much like the rest of the film. The number 8 spot goes to the frameshift drive from Elite Dangerous, because unlike most FTL systems, it has two modes of operation. The first is Supercruise, a slow FTL intended for in-system use, and which is fairly similar to the real-life Alcubierre drive concept, where space-time in front and behind the ship is compressed or expanded, respectively. This skirts around the time dilation issues that crop up with any FTL system, and which most sci-fi just pretends doesn't exist. There are also gameplay opportunities created by Supercruise remaining in real space, though these mostly just manifest as using certain techniques for approaching planets, but there's also PvP play around interdiction and such. The other mode is intended for the vastly greater distances involved in interstellar travel, which is orders of magnitude further than anything interplanetary. What makes it cool though is these jumps travel through witch space, and there's some very interesting effects for capital ships exiting it and witch space leaking through around them. Seventh place goes to Dune and its space folding enabled by the guild navigators and the spice. The whole setting is built upon the spice, the entire galactic civilization in it is founded upon its use by the navigators and spice production on a single planet. So Arrakis and the sandworms are incredibly vital to the entire empire. You'd think that would make it a galactic hub and highly industrialised, but the planet is just so hostile no one really wants to deal with it, and you can't make the place more hospitable without destroying the source of the spice. Well, most people can't. Also, the depiction of space travel in the 1984 David Lynch film is just completely insane! What is even going on here? An off-kilter pick is in 6th place, brought to you by Half-Life, which has exactly zero spacecraft with FTL drives, but does have some other methods of faster than light travel. In the first game, it starts out pretty simple, there's a few portals about here and there caused by the incident, both in the real world and Zen, but that there, Zen, is what makes the Resistance teleporters in 2 and the episodes much more interesting. The Resistance took the existence of Zen and used it as a relay to make controlled point-to-point -point teleportation a possibility, and all whilst hiding from the ever present Combine. The Combine also have a teleport and a portal generation system designed for tunnelling between dimensions, which can either be controlled or uncontrolled. No matter the technology in use though, it's all key to the story, especially in the sequels. The teleporters and the differences between the tech makes up the foundation for the plot. It keeps driving things forward, even in the episodes where the connection to Portal comes in with the Borealis. Though, in retrospect, I feel like this particular link is something that never should have been done. You may feel differently, it's just my opinion. 
Number 5 goes to the slip space drives in Halo. Now yes, gaining access to an extra dimension with eddies and flows and such is a fairly common thing in sci-fi, but Halo takes things just a step further by acknowledging that FTL travel breaks physics. You see, going faster than light implies time travel, which breaks causality. What Halo does is have a fundamental physical effect called causal reconciliation, that blue stuff present on ships when they leave slip space. It heals space-time and vaguely hand-waves away the time travel problem, but the Forerunners still had to bear it in mind with their huge galactic empire. Large amounts of mass or very long journeys created a debilitating effect on slip space travel for everyone else, so it was like slip space traffic jams. There's also neat stuff with differing technology levels of slip space travel, with the Forerunners being masters of it, the Covenant being competent at it, and humanity clumsily fumbling through. Oh, and it's possible to directly weaponize slip space drives. In fourth place is Mass Effect, because well, I love Mass Effect, and because THE Mass Effect itself enables multiple forms of FTL travel. It's a neat little element of the setting that makes great use of the miraculous ability to functionally reduce the mass of objects to zero, either directly or within a whole volume of space. The first of those is the standard FTL drive system used on spacecraft. They all still use their regular thrusters to actually move, but because the ship has lower mass it can accelerate far, far faster than without its ESO core active. But here it sort of cheats things because the core also increases the speed of light within its area of effect, so the ship itself from its own point of view is still slower than light. The same goes for mass relays which take things even further and can create corridors of space that are mass free, essentially setting up instant travel between relays using the same fundamental tech. It's just really neat that both of these stem from the same root, and the law around it is fairly well realised. On the face of it, the third place FTL drive from Battlestar Galactica is very simple. The spacecraft simply teleport from one location to another. But what makes it so good is the tension built into it due to the prep time required. Before every jump, there is a delay due to drive charge time and calculating the coordinates for the end location. The teleporting nature of the FTL drives also ratchets things up because the Cylons could very well just appear out of nowhere at any moment. My three favourite instances of this drive in use are the start of Season 2 when Galactica gets separated from the fleet and has to hop back to Kobol to recalculate coordinates to meet back up with them. But there's Cylons there, so they're forced to network the ship's computers in order to calculate things fast enough, which has some knock-on effects in later episodes. The other two moments are much later in the show in Season 4. First, when the Demetrius fails to jump alongside the damaged Rebel base star, causing a panic in the fleet, and when Tyrrell has to actually prevent Galactica jumping during the coup arc. Great stuff, and who doesn't find the Adama maneuver badass? The silver medal goes to the very in-depth and well-thought-out hyperspatial drive from The Culture, the book series by Ian M. Banks. The setting has hyperspace above and below real space, called infraspace and ultraspace. Hyperdrives use one of these to gain access to the energy grid that surrounds and underpins the universe, gaining traction from it and propelling them beyond the speed of light. This is super interesting to me because it actually provides an explanation around hyperspace that other settings don't bother with. The drives themselves also scale up dramatically in capability when made bigger, and this was used to great effect in Accession. If you've read that book, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. As always, there are some honourable mentions before we get to the top spot. Homeworld, because it looks cool, EVE Online, because it sounds cool, and The Orville, because Quantum Drive looks and sounds cool. Stargate also gets a mention here because of the gradual progression the Tauri drives undergo, and the different colour hyperspace windows that get made depending on which galaxy ships are in. There is also the cool brute force FTL system on Destiny, and we do stay with Stargate for my favourite faster than light method of travel, the Stargates themselves. And there's just so many reasons, many of which are owed to the longevity of the shows and their insistence on building upon and expanding everything as they progressed. The gates are wormhole generators, connected via seven character long addresses based on the locations of stars, but the tech just goes so much more in-depth than that, with many hidden functions and aspects to them that were used in the story. There's time travel, gates can be as big or small as their creators want them to be, they can even be chained together. Also, despite being high-tech devices, they can be dialed manually or powered by lightning. They have a clearly defined set of rules about them, so when those rules were broken you knew something was up, like the black hole episode or when Anubis blew up Earth's gate using ancient knowledge. But my absolute favourite one of these moments was a little episode in Season 2, when O'Neill was losing his mind to the information downloaded into it by a mysterious device. In order to save himself, he modifies the SGC's dialing computer and it dials a new, unknown address with 8 chevrons. It was set up to dial into a gate in an entire other galaxy. 
It was just such a mind-blowing moment, and created a new foundational element of the setting, along with leading towards many other events and stories later on. Warp Drive active. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to check out the Sojourns YouTube channel or the Sojourns Patreon for the Guinevere cross sections. Links are below in the description and pinned comment. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.